Andy. Good morning. How are you? Welcome to Minnesota. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up this morning. I was like, oh, this stuff again. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I drove 40 minutes this morning in it, but it was good. You well, know? Yeah, I live out of town. Yep. So, yeah, yep. It's the uh, same here. Like, oh, uh, yep. Do the snow off my car. Right? Yep, yep. You are um, here. You have a couple of things going on. You have your song country release, which I believe was like the real the national debut uh-huh. to radio. Yes, that was the first song I ever released to country music radio, and I tell people I just never thought that I'd ever hear myself on the radio, and that song got within the top 40, which was just uh, mind-blowing for me. It's interesting, you get around you know, record people and stuff, and they wouldn't call that success, because it's like you want the number one, but for a guy like me, that's just unreal. It's so hard to get them. Yeah. Because when you think about all the songs that are released, Mm-hmm. And then that very narrow funnel you have yep. to go through to get yep. the radio. And then once you're in that funnel, how hard it is to get to that. So, yeah. I mean, right. It, if we'll talk about this later, that's what will come up. But the idea that, that the only thing that, that defines success is that one little spot. Uh huh. Yeah, I think that's a toxic thing, right. especially if you do do more. So right, exactly. Yeah. I totally agree. Good. Keep, keep doing that. All right. <laughs> Your path was kind of interesting um, because you signed to Curve relatively quickly. Uh huh. After um, coming here. In- Actually, I signed to Universal relatively quickly. I came to town. I had a friend of mine bring me down. We were writing songs. Within a week, I had a record deal with Universal. Yes, I didn't make a lot of friends yeah, telling people that. that There's a lot of people that <laughs> slept in cars and whatever. God was like overly good to me to let that happen but um i was a learning period i cut 12 songs with them it was more of a demonstration deal we were working on a sound and whatever we didn't quite unlock um what i wanted to do and i think the label felt that i felt that and uh, then there was a merger with them in capital and in the middle of that uh, i got let go of the label and I didn't float around very long after that before I got my deal with Curb. And it's been a really great development, um, learning a lot more about myself and, and, and kind of being my mind torn apart and put back together and just kind of learning a lot of different things. Because so. you went through, within that space, there's people who are in town for 10 years. Right, right, right. So you had to do a lot in a very short time. Yeah, and I there was a there was a lot that went on in my life personally, um, as well as the, with the music and stuff that really helped with all of that. Um, it wasn't just a kind of my my home life disconnected from me being an artist. Uh, there was just kind of a shake up in my life that kind of made all of that come together, you know. To be who I am in all areas of life, you know. It's come so. up a couple of times now, like finding out who you are as an artist. Um, and as I, we were prepping for the interview, that's what I said. It's one of the things I talk about is that the, the courage to be yourself and be seen for who you are, uh-huh. um, which I think is, a, is that's what it is. It takes courage to do that. Yeah. Um, is that something that came naturally to you, or do you consciously have to? Well, I can kind of back up and to answer that question, I kind of have to have a bigger picture, a little more of what I was talking about uh, with things that happened. God, God really got a hold of me um, in that transition period. Um, my whole life uh, struggled with anxiety, depression, insecurity, and it showed itself in an over self love where it was just really arrogant proud uh, there's a difference in confidence and pride pride stems from an insecurity of your own self and you have to make yourself something that you're not and um, so that was just a really troubling hard time because I really didn't know who I was and what I was doing but I had to act like I was the alpha male anywhere I was going and try to put forward that confidence um, 
God really grounded me in my life. I, I found that the root of all of that, that insecurity, was a lot of actually self-hatred that I had in myself um, that I didn't really realize that I had. Um, and when God really showed me that He loved me, my whole world changed, and I, I just melted, and I kind of found oneness. I, I lost my insecurity because my Creator loves me, and and I that so many things just kind of stem from that. I lost my fear of failure, my fear of what people think about me, uh, those kind of things that just open my world to be the person that I was created to be and I there's a lot of avenues that probably will get answered in future questions as we go down here but that's a little overview really was a salvation experience for me where it was a moment that my life turned around and it made before that, my home life was not the person I was as an artist. And when, when I found that center, I just became me all the time. On stage, interviews, at home, at church, you know. And, and it's, it's freedom, it really is. So, so how does it feel now that you're from working from that place of what it sounds like, self-compassion and self-acceptance? Mm -hmm. How does it feel now when you release a country, or you when, when you get up on the opera stage to say, I don't buy it. How, that, what, what do you feel now that you're sharing from that real place? Um, you still have your thoughts. You get your darts that hit you. You know, if you have uh, two artists that just rocked out right in front of you, I still have my should I be doing this you know should I should I still be doing just what my heart's telling me to do and you kind of get normally right before I get on stage I just kind of um, meditate on what where God has put me and I just I walk out on stage and I'm able to get back to that free place of just saying uh, success is not being number one success is being who you are and um, once I realize that, uh, everything else is icing on the cake, and you're able to just go out and say, this is who I am, um, and I have something to say, and uh, you share it with all your heart, you know, and it's, uh, the only word I can continue to think of is just freedom, because we're all trapped with the, all these weird anxieties and expectations of what people have for you, and every artist goes through all of that and probably have to fight it till the day that you die but um, some people find their help you know and they know where their help is from those fears and anxiety you know so you were not putting in your bio when you said you were thinking yeah I do yeah <laughs> yeah um, the, for most people it, it's a very slow business like we talked about before like people are here 10 years and then they get their break uh -huh. um, your path is slightly different but it still, it will still feel like you have your goals, you have the things you want to do, and you have to wait for those, those things to show up. So how uh -huh. do you handle the need to be patient about you know, waiting for a record release or waiting for the right time to release the song that you really want to put out? Yeah. How do you handle patience? Well, knowing that I'm not in control was the first step. Um, there's another anxiety that comes along that a lot of people will make you believe that you're in control of your own destiny, and which is true to some extent, but you can't uh, avoid potholes that you don't know are coming yet. Um, so that really kind of, you'll consistently hear me fall back on my trust in God because um, coming to realize that I can try my best to manipulate and control and push and be anxious uh, about my future and it still not go the way I want it to go or even if it went the way I wanted it to go realizing later that that was not the right way it should have went when I when I realize that I'm I'm really bad at making things work in the future 
uh, I was able to just be free of my anxiety of like I, I, the record should have been out last year or anger towards the label or anything else because I just kind of I I'm very much in the moment of I'm gonna sing as best I can in the moment treat people as best I can right now uh, work as hard as I can and the rest I don't think I'm called to manipulate results. I think I'm just trying, called to do my best and kind of take steps of faith as I go along, which just demolishes anxiety. It demolishes, um, re- there is a good type of responsibility, but then there's a paralyzing feeling like you're responsible of this all going well, right, and that's not healthy. And, I don't think God really wants us to carry that burden, you know. Well, that's most of my work. I <laughs> yeah. work with creatives and people who work with creatives as a uh-huh. coach. Um, so that's a lot of my work. Is, yeah. Is getting, getting, uh, is talking about that because even if you know that as you you do, feeling it. To your heart and your head. We were just talking about. There's a there's a huge road, long road between your heart and your head, and that's where just kind of. My way of going about it is I just ask God, make what what I kind of understand up here just to be a reality to me. Like, let me see it, taste it, touch it. I want this to be actual reality and not some fake thing that I'm talking about on an interview, you know. I want to see it worked out in my life, so. Fantastic. How do you filter feedback? Because you can't let everything in. Yeah, uh uh-huh. Yep. You like listen to everybody. Yep. But you need to hear the, uh, the constructive criticism that can come your way. That's going to help course. you, you know, do better what you're trying to do. Yep. So how do you filter who fits where? There can be a pride that comes in with, I've got it, I'm an artist, I've got it figured out, don't tell me what to do. Then there's also a, a place where you're too open and you'll get ripped apart, like you said, of, of accepting everything or taking everything to heart or being offended by everything someone says. And then you'll never find who you are. Um, I think f- starting back of kind of how we started, losing that fear of failure releases you from the one extreme of, of like, these people are, they, this guy doesn't like my music or whatever. Uh, and so I'm going to change. It gives you the patience to be able to go, even though this guy doesn't like it, he, I, I received this information and I'm not going to make a rash decision and, and not record this song. I'm going to just kind of stick to it because I still believe this is where my heart's at. But I'm going to give thought to this. I'm going to accept it. I'm not going to cl- close myself off in a way where, you know, don't get in... And, and freak me out and you can kind of take a an overall consensus as you go through life you're going to get a lot and you'll start seeing a pattern of 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 the truth of what you should be doing whether it be what you feel or what the majority of people say that they like about what you do or whatever yeah, you keep hearing the same over and over and over, right. that yeah, that and you say. you naturally just kind of be yeah. comfortable with that. Yeah. Try not to get your identity in what other people say about you, um, but you can gravitate to certain places and learn. And you might go to one of those places where this is what everyone thought you were, and get there and realize this is not all of it. You know, yeah. there's more to to there's more to it than yeah. that. You know. There's a, there's a consistent growth too. One thing I'll say is for advice is to uh, back to that pressure that you'll feel. Sometimes you feel like uh, like for a first record, for a first single, it needs to be the one. People will tell you you've got to have the song. Your record has to be perfect and perfect representation of who you are exactly. That's a tremendous burden to carry. It, but if you start thinking more of walking by faith and knowing that even if I make a bad decision, I'm learning more about this whole thing, this life thing, as I go forward, that again, you know, it's not like, okay, I failed. And, and 
that's the end. It's not, you know. We learn very much in our weakness and in our failures, and and not to be afraid of that would be, it's huge. It was huge for me, anyways. It's, it's something that keeps coming up. Is um, I think I've heard it in at least eighty percent of the interviews I've done. Wow! Year, not just wow! Here, but all over. Right. Um, is not being afraid of failing. Yep. How does failing, quote unquote? still feel like in that moment when mm-hmm. it's happening mm-hmm. and you realize oh this didn't work out the way I wanted it to mm-hmm. before you've had time to process it and pick up mm-hmm. what, what can I learn from this what can I improve that that feeling when you're in that when you're just flopped face down yeah. <laughs> it didn't work out yeah. how does that moment still feel I'll, I, I'll back up to trusting God um, I um, the more I trust God fear of failure totally leaves me um when when i do fail there is a moment that i have to check myself and go okay now was that um was that really failure or whatever because uh, most of this is weird but the underlining what i understand about that reaction of like even beating up on ourselves when we failed is also a sense of pride in a sense of that I didn't want to be seen messing up and and I should have been good enough to nail it and I'm not and that's stepping outside of reality and not realizing that we're human you know and that we have flaws and that we make bad judgment calls and whatever so to be able to uh, we don't do it perfectly to to be at peace with our failures. We don't want to be comfortable with them in a sense where we're lazy, but when they happen, uh, you have to know that there was a reason that that it happened, and you learned. Self-compassion, which you get from your Right. Um, this is a human experience. Right, Every, right. Whatever your career is, you know, everybody's going to mess up sometimes. Right. Um, when you... Because I'm... I'm your name came up in another interview and because they saw your name on my sheet and I was like, oh, did you guys, you know, did you check out the Opry performance? And they're like, no, we missed it. So I'm like, oh, you know, Opry people put it on YouTube, mm-hmm. like, go check it out. Um, so I wanted to ask you about when you played uh, Fun House, the whole title, for, yeah. <laughs> for the record clean up on Alpha. Yeah, yeah. When you play that at the Opry, the reaction in Opry House, the, they, the roof came off. Um, were you aware of that, that that was, that was the feeling in the room? Or well, were you just so in that song that you didn't realize it until everybody started cheering for minutes? Well, I had a slight bit of nerves when I first walked out. <laughs> and I, yeah. I just kind of addressed the crowd. I didn't really know how to. It's like, this is my first time, and yeah. I'm glad to be here. And this is a song I wrote with my friend Will Nance, and I just started playing. So there was nerves within the first couple lines of the song then the song really grabbed me as we were playing i was hearing the opry band play it i'd never heard them play it before um and i just kind of got lost in the song now in the second verse the first verse and the second verse and and i'm trying to do this by memory remember i was just kind of lost in it in the second verse i was starting to sing more outwardly i was starting to look at the audience and look at the people and like i'm telling you a story and um I don't know why it happened that way, but then when I started looking out, everybody was like really quiet, and they had a lot of people had a confused look on their face. I don't know why, but then I started by the end, I was having these thoughts of I want because it's an obscure song, it's different. It's yeah, it's it's called Clean Up on Al Five. It's about meeting a girl in a grocery store and falling apart, and it's like it's a weird idea. So I, I was having these thoughts of like, do they get it? Like, do they even understand the song and whatever? And I started feeling a little weird, and I ended the song and it was dead silent. And I was like, oh no! And then the place erupted, and I got a the song I believe got a standing ovation, and. Um, about 30 seconds into the standing ovation, I thought they were getting quieter, and I stepped up to the mic to say something, and they got louder because they didn't want me to talk yet. And that's when I got emotional and uh, just felt like I, f- I felt accepted with the country music uh, fans and and uh, felt like, okay, 
I know I'd done it, I know I'd recorded, I know I'd been in town, but kind of that head heart thing happened in that moment where it's like I could maybe find a place here, a career here, doing something that I love, you know? So. I, I, I'd say you're doing that. Yeah, yeah. cool. I mean, it's, and I think that's why it resonated so much with people. I mean, yes, it's a song that doesn't give you everything on a platter. You have to think about what the words you want to say. Right, right. But it's a real story. Mm-hmm. It's a feeling everybody has had. Yeah. No matter what place they are in it, life, right. everybody knows what you're talking about, whether yeah. you want to admit it or not. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's something that's, it's never been completely gone out of country music, but it's it was kind of, you know, a little bit less on the forefront over yeah. the last few years. And I think for them to see a new artist mm-hmm. step on that stage and do that, yeah, yeah dude, that was Things that I kind of miss, I mean, some people mistake, like, great songs being... <laughs> Like really crafty, well written, amazing, twist your arm into feeling an emotion type of a song. I, I I don't know how to explain it other than that. But what I really miss about the old time country music that I feel like it's been lost a little bit in a lot of different kinds of music and art is just honesty and reality of like what you said. This is what people actually feel when you're driving down the road and you hear a guy singing about something and you go I've I have felt that before sometimes what causes us to be emotional is not because it's a sad story or whatever but it's like this this makes sense to me I remember feeling that before and that's what causes us to kind of go I gotta have that you know what I mean you know so and on a much lighter yeah (laughs) all right (laughs) I'm sorry. I get. No, I. No, this I. Lo- this is like my favorite interview because this I like. Is the kind of conversations I have all the time. I like not so talking about what type of underwear I wear. Sometimes yeah, you go to. S- exactly. Oh, exactly. You know, <laughs> you know that's what it's mean. good to be lighthearted um, and fun, yes. though. <laughs> if you had to, it's still music related. So if you had to put together a record that was kind of the soundtrack to your life, like stuff that you grew up with, that was with you in high school, what kind of songs do you have? As far as like a total, like different artists and that yeah, kind of like stuff. Uh, uh, you grew up with, like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Miami, Miami. Keith Whitley, with these arms being your way, Keith Whitley. Uh, I'm just a country boy. Is prob by Don Williams is probably can really encompass like who I am. Um, if Hollywood don't need you, honey, I still do. With Don Williams. Um, Roger Miller, shoot, pretty much all the Roger Miller stuff you could put on there. I have his box set. Um, Merle Haggard, most of his stuff. George Jones, I mean, bluegrass stuff. I mean, I could just go forever. You know, I just like, yeah, it's nuts. It it doesn't make it wouldn't make any sense to anyone. They'd look at it all. You'd kind of find a thread in there, and I think it would be just honest songs that's the thread that you would that you would find real artistry so thank you